Hi, I'm Lee Easton, one of the tutors here at TutorHero.net, where we offer online tutoring. Uh, we offer tutoring in a variety of subjects and uh, at a variety of levels. So most college subjects are covered. We offer tutoring in uh, at levels ranging from the high school level uh, all the way up through the PhD level, MBA level, other graduate levels. Uh, I primarily do economics. I'm from the UC Berkeley uh, PhD program in economics. Before that, I studied mathematics and philosophy at the University of South Carolina. So I offer tutoring in a variety of subjects. Uh, in economics, I, I do undergraduate level economics almost any class. Uh, microeconomics, I go all the way up to the PhD level and in the, in the MBA level. Uh, macroeconomics, the same thing. Uh, I do game theory, finance. Uh, various topics in mathematics, calculus, real analysis, and topology particularly. And for statistics, I can do introductory statistics or more mathematical versions of statistics. And from my previous life as a philosopher, I can still help you in logic. So today, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be giving a demonstration of how our online tutoring setup works. And we're going to be solving a game theory problem. And so this game, this problem comes from a actual problem set that uh, I've worked on a student with. And they're going to give us a game, and we're going to be asked to solve for what are the pure strategy Nash equilibria. So the first question you might ask yourself is, uh, so, so what's the point of this? And so basically the idea is, in a game, we as economists want to be able to explain or predict what's going to happen. And Nash equilibrium is one of the tools by which we make those predictions. So Nash equilibrium occurs when every player is engaged in a best response to the decisions of the other player. So what does that mean? It means that given what you're actually doing, I am doing the best thing for me. And it means that given what I'm actually doing, you are doing the best thing for you. Now it doesn't mean that it's the best for both of us. It doesn't mean that it's the best for society. It just means that given the actual actions of the other player, there's nothing else I could do that would make me better off. So Nash equilibrium is one way of predicting uh, what's going to happen in a game. And so uh, because it's so widely used, you're going to need to know how to find it. So here we're given a game. So how does this game work? Well, one player, the row player, we often call them, chooses a row. So they can go up, middle, or down. And another player, the column player, chooses a column, so they can go left, center, or right. So each of those players is going to undertake their action uh, simultaneously without knowledge of what the other person is doing. So the row player will choose a row, and the column player will choose a column without knowing what the other player is doing. Nevertheless, in equilibrium, they must correctly predict the actions of the other player. So how do you find the Nash equilibrium? Well, it's actually not such a complicated thing. So what you do is you look through for each player. So we're going to start with the row player. What you're going to do is you're going to indicate the best responses of each player to each possible action of the other person. So we're going to start with the, with the row player, and we're going to start with the row player's response to the column player playing left. So if the column player plays left, what are the payoffs to the row player? Well, so first off, we should probably explain the payoffs. Um, in most classes, you would have already seen this by now. But the payoffs are written so that the row player's payoff is on the left, and the column player's payoff is on the right. So what are the payoffs to the row player if the column player chooses left? Well, if the row player chooses up, the row player gets two. If the row player chooses middle, the row player gets, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, if they, if they choose middle, they get one. And if they choose down, they get also one. So we ask ourselves, which one of those is best? And of course, up with two is, is the best. Two is bigger than one. So what do we do? Well, we'll put a check mark next to it. So the row player's best response to left is to go up. Now we ask ourselves, what if the uh, column player had chosen center? And so for the row player, again, we ask ourselves, which is best? Well, 6 is good, 5 is worse than 6, and 1 is worse than 5 or 6. So 6 is the best, 
So if the column player chose center, the row player would choose up. So now we go to the final column, which is right. We ask ourselves, what would the row player want to do in that case? Well, if he goes up, he gets one. If he goes middle, also one. Down is four. Four is better than one. So four is the best bet. All right, so we have these check marks in these boxes. And for now, we're going to ignore those and move on to asking the same question for the column player. So we're going to say, suppose the row player chose up, what does the column player want to do? Suppose the row player chose middle, what does the column player do? Suppose the row player chose down, what does the column player want to do? So in the case of up, the column player compares two to one to one, and two is best. So we're going to put a check mark there. In the case where the row player chooses middle, we compare six to five to one, and six is best. And in the case of down, we're going to compare one to one to four, and four is best. And so, now what do we do? Well, anywhere that there are two check marks is a Nash equilibrium. So, where might that be? Well, here for one, and here. So, how do we know that? Well, keep in mind, a Nash equilibrium means you're best responding to the actual choices of the other player. So, whenever there's two check marks, then the row player is best responding to that choice for the column player, and the column player is best responding to that choice for the row player. So, for the row player, for example, in this box, for the row player, when the column player is choosing left, the row player's best response is to choose up. And similarly, for the column player, when the row player is playing up, the column player's best response is to choose left. So that they're mutually reinforcing responses. The same thing holds true down here. Now you might ask yourself, I mean, 4-4 four, four is better than 2-2, two, two, so why wouldn't we end up down here instead of up here? But that's a question that goes beyond the level of just finding the Nash equilibrium. Similarly, 5-5 five, five is better to, than both. Again, uh, just because something is the best outcome for both players doesn't mean it's the Nash equilibrium. So there are a lot of interesting things that you can find about the Nash equilibrium, and perhaps in future sessions we may be able to discuss those. Again, there are, there are places that you can go beyond that in a different way, so you can go towards repeated games, and again, potentially in future situations we can discuss that. But for now, what we've learned is if you want to solve for the Nash equilibrium in a matrix game, you go through and you indicate all the best responses, and in any cell where there's more than one check mark, you found yourself in Nash equilibrium. So I hope you find this helpful if you're taking a game theory class or if you just want to learn more about game theory. And if you find our tutoring helpful, if you like the approach, then feel free to contact us at tutorhero.net, uh, email us at, tutor, at tutorhero.net, and we will help direct you to the right tutor. So we have a variety of tutors here for a variety of subjects. 